Well, earlier I spoke to the television and radio presenter Mariella Frostrup and I asked her if the decision in Miriam O'Reilly's tribunal would persuade television executives to think again. I think it definitely will because I think it shows that, that, that there will be repercussions, you know, that these decisions can't be taken and then just sort of s slipped under the carpet. I think Miriam O'Reilly did an incredibly brave thing because she won't have had much encouragement and she'll have stepped out I into that sort of uh, fray on her own. And I think it's a, a really, you know, it's a, it's a landmark judgment and we should all welcome it because it's, it's not just representative of a, a battle for women on television, you know, which is very, very tiny, tiny minority of people but there are many many women out there across the country who will suffer similar problems um, in their careers as they reach a certain age and I think that this is a sort of blow for the for, for the for the right side you know when people are considering whether they should hire somebody or not for television you have a screen test and and that phrase comes out does the camera love her does the camera love him and I've heard it asked they rarely of both. say does the camera well, love him I th they're, they're they look for personality, they look for, you know, uh, you know all, uh, opinions, they look for all kinds of things uh, in men that they don't necessarily uh, look for in women. You, you, don't, you don't think actually whether the face works with the camera has any relevance at all. But look at all the faces that do work. I mean, John, you're obviously a beauty, but no, there are many faces on television that aren't necessarily made for television. You know, I'm not going to list a, a number of, you know, visually challenged presenters, but it's not about looks. Uh, and I think in this instance, it was very much about age, which seems ludicrous to me when the majority of TV audiences are over 50 anyway. Well, why do you think it happens? Because I think that there's a, a culture uh, which began pretty much when I was a teenager, which was that youth was, was elevated to levels uh, beyond which a society can't function, you know, and we're obsessed with youth, we're obsessed with preserving it and keeping it and hanging on to it. And actually, ultimately, we're all going to get old, you know, and we might as well, you know, if you don't have people working over 50, what's the point of extending the retirement age to 70? If women are going to start losing their jobs the minute they hit, Five zero, then that's an awful long time that the country is going to be paying pensions to people who are unemployable. Let, let me put this, let's be candid. You're blonde and, and you have a very nice, quite husky voice. Um, Thank you. That will have played in your advantage. Well, I'm certainly it will. I worked in a visual medium, but I don't expect that the minute I reach an age that for me is still a vibrant, energetic, you know, work-interested age, I should be retired because of the fact I've got a couple of wrinkles. I welcome my wrinkles, you know. I think that we should all be quite glad to have reached middle age and still be thriving, and we should allow, be allowed to continue to do that. Mariella Frostrup talking to us earlier.